in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Thank you very much, and good morning and welcome to our parish Eucharist on this, the third Sunday of Advent, also known as Gaudete Sunday, a day when, in actual fact, things change very slightly as we lighten the load a little bit of our Advent fasting. Rose-coloured vestments are always worn midway through Advent and midway through Lent. These Sundays are named Gaudete and Laetare Sundays and are days of refreshment. And the name comes from the traditional entrant antiphon or introit sung at these services. Both terms may be broadly translated as rejoice or delight and refer to the importance of the theme of Christian joy, even in the midst of a penitential season, which is reflected in the readings of both of these Eucharists. Listen to Thessalonians this morning. It reminds us that Lent and Advent are seasons of preparation but we are coming close to the great feast and that is quickly approaching. And so this just, in a sense, clicks people into remembering what's ahead. The day takes its common name from the Latin word gaudete, rejoice, the first word of a traditional opening sentence of this day's Eucharist. Gaudete in domino semper, rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. And today's letter, as I say, to the Thessalonians reinforces this. The whole of the introit antiphon reads, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. Let your forbearance be known to all. For the Lord is near at hand. Have no anxiety about anything, but in all things, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Rejoice in the Lord always. As we prepare for worship this morning, let us say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with everyone. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, to our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen.
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now come to the lighting of the Advent candle, and my vestments today clearly explain why we have the pink candle on our Advent wreath. This Refreshment Sunday, Gaudete Sunday, is a, a lighter day as we look forward to the joy of Christmas time. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came to bear witness to the light, that all might believe through him. We pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you carried the light of John's message to the people of Israel. May we live by that same light and bear witness to your gospel today. We light the Advent candle and remember Christ our King who has come as light in the darkest night to his glory now we sing. Oh, the third light's for the Baptist who prepared the way of God so that we might live, love, and all forgive in the kingdom of the Lord. And so for the colic of this Sunday and this week, let us pray. O God, for whom we watch and wait, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way of your Son. Give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and to suffer for the cause of right. With Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now attend to the reading. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And no flesh. 
that shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah has said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one who you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan where John was baptizing. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now I speak in God's name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I wonder how many of you know of the sculptor, the very famous sculptor, Henry Moore. In a lengthy interview a year before Henry Moore died, that great sculptor reflected on how his early years in the Yorkshire mining village influenced his later work. His father, a miner, was very fond of baked apples for pudding. And poor little child, poor little mite Henry, was always the one chosen to go down into their dank, dark cellar to collect the apples stored in the dark and the coolness. Poor little Henry. He was frightened of the dark, so he used to go down the steps sideways with his back against the wall, always keeping one eye on the lighted doorway above. And it was later, when he was carving deep into his massive pieces of stone to create a sculpture, that he said he always felt he wanted to find a way out, remembering that fellow experience. And many of Henry Moore's massive sculpted forms have holes in them. But for him, the holes have their own significance, for what appears essential is left out and the light is let in. In the mining village where he grew up, there was always competition between the bright sun and the dense, dark fog, between the daylight and the pitch black of the mines, between the small child and those enormous slag heaps. 
in Henry Moore's work, The Light Always Wins, as the child comes to shape the slag heap into human form. Today's Gospel begins with the absence of the light. John the Baptist is a witness to speak for the light, but he explains he is not the light himself. John the Baptist, you could say, is God's sculptor, giving shape and form to a random mass of people who came to visit him out in the wilderness and to form a random mass of people insisting always on the essential place of the light, encouraging people into that light. When he faces critical opposition, John points the way for himself, in preparing for the one, the light, to come. So John the Baptist keeps declaring, I am not, in order to point to the one who can say, I am. For Jesus is the great I am. For Jesus is God. In John's era, the actual identity of the one coming after John is unknown, of course. But John is clear in his own mind that he is he. He is not the light. For he must make way for the light, create a space for the light to shine through. And when people see the light, John's own task is finished. John the Baptist's role can be appreciated fully only when the light does come in the person, of course, of Jesus. It's interesting to recall that John's stature among his own people was so great that many did become to believe that he was the Messiah. Indeed, when Jesus comes to ask his own followers who people think he is, the apostles tell him that some think him to be John the Baptist, come back to life. Such was John's stature at the time. And even in the early church, there was a group that held on to the belief that John, not Jesus, was in fact the Christ. And that is why the fourth gospel is so emphatic about John's role. It stresses that John is not the light. He is the witness, the herald to the light. Now, like John, we are asked to make way for the light. For none of us is the light. And I think neither you nor I would claim we were. Our role is to let the light through the solid darkness that litters our human landscapes. And that light appears a mountainous task alongside which our own abilities and commitments look so small, so, so small. Who are we to compete against such dense darkness that we sometimes come across, when we come across evil, when we come across sadness, when we come across all manner of things which feel insurmountable, like those massive slag heaps? How do we feel? Where do we get the light to illumine the path for ourselves? more importantly, for others. Well, Advent calls us to make what contribution we can. To look first inwardly at ourselves and to work quietly on the darkness that dwells within ourselves. Our selfishness, our lack of forgiveness and the lack of love that keeps the light of the good news, the gospel, from so many people and on larger social issues like justice and peace and care of the oppressed, love of all creation that God has given us, which requires the witness of a caring community, we are challenged by the gospel to work together. Like Henry Moore, carving through stone until he comes and reveals the light, we have to keep chipping our way towards the light that is our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Our work at times may appear fruitless. We may just chip a little at the time. Or it may appear just odd to people who look at our efforts. But the space that we are creating is significant. For holiness is the constant struggle of letting Christ be the light that shines through everything that you and I do. So let our work puzzle people. Who cares? As long as the light gets through. And that light is the great joy which we live in perpetually. For with our knowledge today, we are blessed with the grace of knowing the nativity and knowing the resurrection of Jesus. And so even in our Advent and Lenten times of introspection, we are called to share the joy of our Christmas and Easter faith. May that ever be so, even in these times of penitence leading up to the two great festivals, may we be the joyful pointers to the light that is Christ. And so joyfully now and in the power of the Spirit we actually declare our faith in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. and We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now in the power of that Spirit and in union with Christ, let us bring our prayers to the Father. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church this day, praying for Justin, our Archbishop, Christopher and Richard, our bishops here in the Southwark Diocese, for Simon, our Archdeacon, and Rachel, our Area Dean. And we pray for our parishes and all Christian people. We pray, Lord, that we, as communities, may be seen to be people working for the coming of the kingdom, always joyfully informed by the knowledge of the nativity and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for your world which you have gifted to us and handed to our responsibility. We pray for the leaders of the nations. We pray for all governments around the world as they make decisions which affect not only their own nation, but many around 
We pray, Lord, particularly for those this day who go without a roof over their head, without clean water to drink or food in their bellies. We pray for displaced people who have lost that concept of home. Lord, we pray for all aid agencies, all who seek to make people's lives that little bit better this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are sick or suffering at this time, and amongst them in our own community. We pray for Paul Barry, for Catherine Payne Gray, Chika Onunkwe, Andrew McNinn, Jesse Willoughby, Amir Gill, Deborah Chapman, Joyce Nelson, Dylan Long, and Robert Willey. We pray for those mentioned in our intercessions group. We pray for those who mourn. We bring before you this day, Lord, those who we carry in our own heart this day. Be with them in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us, good Lord, as we remember those who have died, particularly praying for those who have died recently. Among them, Tony Lander, Johan Fernanda, Eric Beale, Joan Swaden, Chinwe Onunkwe, Michael Oy and Racy MacDonald. We pray for those known to us and those whose year's mind falls about this time. Rest eternal, grant them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us, good Lord, as we finally pray for ourselves May the joy of our faith ever be on our faces in what we say and in what we do. May be, we be witnesses to Christ our Lord who came among us and healed people, who came among us and died for us all, and who rose again to give us the promise of eternal life. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Will you please stand, if you can, for the peace. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace, and of the increase of his government there will be no end. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you very much. Let's offer one another a sign of peace if we're together or pray for those otherwise who we know and love in church and beyond.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth, for by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your own image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy, and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of God and Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendor and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. In the night he gave up himself for us all. He took bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. same way after supper he took the cup and again he gave you thanks he gave it to them all saying drink this all of you for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me Therefore we proclaim the death that Christ suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high and we long for his coming in glory. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Look with favour on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with Mary, the mother of God, Peter, Paul, and all your saints, 
at the table in your kingdom where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today. Forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Behold God's holy gift for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O Lord, for these heavenly gifts, kindle in us the fire of your Spirit, that when your Christ comes again, we may shine as lights before his face, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen indeed, and a very warm welcome to you all this morning. It's good to have you here online, and we look forward to you joining us subsequently. We have a great joy in our faith, and the joy today is reflected by the use of the rose pink vestments and indeed lighting our rose candle today. And that's something for us really to remember about Advent, that it's a joyful preparation for the coming of Christ at Christmas time. 
In his 2014 Gaudete Sunday homily, Pope Francis said that Gaudete Sunday is known as the Sunday of joy and that instead of fretting about all they still haven't done to prepare for Christmas, people should think of all the good things that life has given us. And that's possibly a very important thing for us to remember. So in the end, if you see a priest wearing rose pink, remember the call to live joyfully. We will continue to broadcast our services over the next couple of weeks, of course, online, and we look forward to you joining us then. We also will be actually welcoming people into church at 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings generally. At Christmas Day, at dinner time, we change the time to 10 o'clock in the morning, and we hope that we may see some of you here in church. We are asking people to book in to ensure they get a seat ready and available for them here because we do have a maximum number of people who can come and attend our services. So please do be in touch if you'd like to come either at midnight at 11.30 on Christmas Eve or at 10 o'clock on Christmas morning to ensure that you can get in. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The peace of God which pass, passes all understanding Keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and love of God. And may Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.